Five, Hopefully four, more than that. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, a good spin up here from Chonk Eve. Trying to get up to oh. speed, punting its opponent across the box. Sparks everywhere, pieces of robot littering the floor. Tsunami now stuck up against the rail. Two minutes and 45 seconds left. They're asking for their unstick. They get one from the house bot. And that rumbling sound is Chonkeev. It is that very heavy shell. Quite an ominous noise. Now, it doesn't seem like they're getting an unstick here. Oh, here it comes. No. Oh, oh. Fluffy is, is indecisive. There we All go. All right, Fluffy successfully getting <laughs> uh, Tsunami off of the rail. And this fight will be back on here in just a moment. Now, Fluffy, the house robot, weighs, what, about 300 pounds? Mm -hmm. Yep. Half-inch steel armor all around. Uh, You've got to have a lot of mass to uh, push around, you know, an up to 45 pound robot in an awkward position. <laughs> when you request an unstick here, you do, you know, it is a double edged sword. Oh, right. there's a cage breach. Oh, look at you that. Can see you there. See here on the left, the, uh, the sacrificial layer of Lexan here. Now, there's two layers of Lexan inside of these boxes, every single one of our boxes here. We have one sacrificial layer that's thin, that's on the inside, and then we have a one-inch air gap, and then we have a much thicker panel of Lexan on the outside so that our audience stays safe. Um, now, over here, you know, we can see this, this kind of curled up piece of Lexan. I think that was the spinning weapon from Tsunami getting punted into the glass. Yeah, you could see they just went flying across the arena, full force weapon hit into the wall. Um, you know, this isn't in itself unsafe. We have that second layer behind it, uh, but we like to make sure both layers are intact uh, for the fight. Yeah, so let's, let's take a look at what did that uh, on the replay here. Uh, Lexan, of course, also known as polycarbonate, sometimes referred to as bulletproof glass. Um, it's an extremely strong plastic. You can see they're wow. going flying weapon first into the wall. Yeah, really fantastic. <laughs> now, um, now, in terms of the procedure here, uh, typically what we do is we'll pause this match, we'll load out the robots, and then we will replace the Lexan here. Now, we also have a second cage, uh, another big box here inside of the building. We may decide to run fights out of cage four for the time being, just to keep us on schedule. But um, yeah, this is this is a full arena breach. Yeah. Now we can see the uh, the teams here. You know they're making the robot safe, and they're going to be loading these out. This match is paused. It's not over yet, and uh, we are uh, going to be seeing. Perhaps they'll move this fight over into cage four. Yeah, um, you know, it's always safety first here at NHRL. You don't want to keep going and, and risk breaching the second layer. That's why there's two layers, so we have this opportunity to safely move on uh, and contain the robots. These robots are extremely dangerous. Sometimes it's easy to kind of forget about this, but, you know, there's the energy of a low-speed car accident when these robots come together. Uh, so a lot of energy to contain. Um, and that's why we have the two layers of, uh, of Lexan there on the walls. Yeah, we have a lot of people in the audience and we want to keep them safe. You know, we have fires, we have explosions in the box. We have, you know, uh, just giant spinning masses being kicked <laughs> into the Lexan. Um, this is our first arena breach in a very long time here at the, uh, the league. This doesn't happen every day. And uh, you've got to have a lot of uh, physics behind your weapon <laughs> to uh, to, to really dig a curl into uh, into the Lexan. And to be clear, you know, for all those uh, out there, we are saying arena breach. The arena was not fully breached. We have full containment. It was the inner layer of Lexan. There's still a full, complete, unbreached second layer behind that. Um, but for safety's sake, we always pause the match after that first layer is breached uh, to make sure that we're as safe as can be. 
Now, the really cool thing about the cage design, too, is that it's really easy for them to pop out a single Lexan panel, bring up a fresh panel, and put it in there. We're replacing the Lexan here pretty often um, in the competition, just that we have really clear views for our mobile cameras. And uh, this is going to be just a crystal clear new panel of Lexan here <laughs> shortly. The last time that we had a partial uh, arena breach, um, you know, the, the, re the replacement took about 30 minutes. Um, and so here right now, the safety manager is going to be uh, really taking a look here cage side to see what we're going to do here um, and come up with a plan that uh, is going to keep everyone safe. So the uh, safety inspector is saying that there is no crack. Okay. It's just a gash, and they've deemed it uh, safe to continue. It hasn't fully uh, breached or cracked uh, as we first thought. Yeah. Um, just a gash, just a little peel there. Um, and after the inspection, they're saying it's safe. We still have full two uh, intact layers. So great to hear. Um, but we're always extra safe here. We always double check these things um, and take a look. And after inspection, we're good to go. So we'll be back at it here um, in, uh, in cage one. The question, uh, did that count as an unstick? Or was I the match so. paused before? Technically, the match pauses as soon as there's a breach. Um, but uh, yeah, well, that's, that that's a good question Because that could be really there, important uh, if we have another unstick Well, I mean, you would, you would restart the match with, uh, with the robot up against the rail, and then he would have to immediately ask for an unstick. Got a great uh, shot here of our VIP area. It's full stands here in the VIP uh, section. They are they're sitting cage side. They've got the best seat in the house. And full stands here. Stands have been packed all day with an extremely energetic crowd. Great to see all this energy around, uh, you know, a STEM-based robot event. Amazing. <laughs> Love the fans. You can hear uh, Chonky's shufflers now as they help their uh, opponent back into their corner. It seems like a little <laughs> bit of mobility issue there. Yeah, what a okay. noise. <laughs> now they're going to uh, start this fight up again after the pause. So uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, still down about 20 or 30 seconds here on the clock. But uh, they've opted to restart this match back in their original squares. All right, 15 seconds down here on the clock. The weapon on Tsunami is back. And Chonky just chucking that weapon straight into the wood here on the rail. Wow. Oh. That armor package being peeled away. And there's magic smoke coming out of Tsunami. That is a battery fire. That's not what you want to see uh, from your robots. Uh, the smoke is what makes it work, and when the smoke leaves the robot, it has a tendency to stop working. We are we are seeing the soul of this robot leaving its body. You know that this is a lipo fire because that smoke <laughs> is hanging really close to the floor. It's heavy, heavy smoke being sucked out of this box with our negative air pressure system. Lipo, of course, uh, stands for lithium polymer, the type of batteries that we use to run these robots. They do not like 